السلام عليكم <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with God's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer Ramadan Mubarak we like to welcome all of our viewers and listeners today on StreamYard Facebook Live and YouTube to our Ramadan session here in Jacksonville Florida Masjid Muhammad let us begin with du'a al-fatiha bismillahi rahman rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina as-siratal mustaqim mustaqeem siratal ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayril maghdubi alayhim Amen. <clears throat> and we translate from Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation with Allah's with interjections from Imam Muhammad, of course. God grant him the highest station in the paradise. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praise belongs to Allah the cherisher and sustainer of all the systems of knowledge, Imam Muhammad, and also with Allah's name, Imam Muhammad. The merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, sole master on the day of judgment. Thee alone do we seek for your aid and assistance. Thee alone do we worship and thee alone do we seek for aid and assistance. Guide us along the path that is straight, the path of those whom thou hast bestowed thy favors and thy grace, not the path of those that have earned your displeasure, nor of those who go astray. Amin, we say, may it be secured and safeguarded. Sadaq Allah God the Mighty spoke the truth to Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prayers and peace be upon our Prophet. <clears throat> Again, greetings, assalamu alaikum. That is, may the peace that only Almighty Allah can give you be upon you now you know we say assalam assalam this is one of the names of god in the quran in chapter 59 uh the hasha the gathering the term or the attributes of allah is given in two verses some of them not all of the 99 names of god uh some of them are given in chapter 59 verse 23 and 24 and one of them is As-Salam. And uh, so Muhammad the prophet, he taught his followers to say, after this verse was revealed to him, he taught his followers to say, As-Salamu Alaikum. Now you can say Salamu Alaikum, like in some parts of the Quran, it'll just say Salamu Alaikum, like in chapter 6, verse 54, earlier verse revealed in Mecca. It says Salamu Alaikum. It doesn't have the definite article. But when, uh, but that's just general. Peace be upon you. That's what it means. Peace be upon you. Uh, but when the attributes were revealed in Medina, that verse that came later, and it had the name of God, Assalam. So the prophet he would greet, Assalamu alaikum. And as a matter of fact, let me read something to you from. Uh, I have it here on my phone. Pull it up. Because I'm, I'm sharing the distinction between salamu alaikum and assalamu alaikum and what the prophet uh, taught his followers. So, um, let's see. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, this is a saying of Muhammad the prophet, present peace be upon him, Sahih Bukhari. Dakhala Ali, this is Fatima's daughter, Ali, Ali Ibn, uh, Ali, Abi. Dakhla aliyya, pardon me. Dakhla aliyya. Abi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi ba'di ayyam, ayyami, faqal, faqala, assalamu alaykum, or assalamu alayki. Now he's speaking to his daughter, so this is singular for the female. Faqala, the messenger said, the prophet said, Assalamu with the definite article now. Assalamu alayki. 
يا فاتمة فقلت وعليك السلام So she says, one day my father, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and his household visited me. Assalamu alaikum, may God's peace be upon you, O Fatima. And she said, peace be upon you too. I answered, Assalamu alaikum, or wa alaikum assalam, the Arabic. Wa alaikum assalam. And unto you also be the peace that only God gives. So when we make the distinction now, let us be aware that when we say assalamu alaikum, this is we're we're saying to our brothers and sisters, it's a it's a uh, a, a higher greeting. May the peace that only Allah, the peace giver, assalam, can give you be upon you, and also the peace giver, as Imam W. Muhammad taught us and shared with us. The peace giver, Allah, that's one of God's name, obligates you to keep the peace. Alaikum, the obligation, Allah, on all of us. So we want to give that better greeting. There's nothing wrong. It's the salam alaikum. But that's not the peace that God gives. That's in the Quran. Salam alaikum. And then in another portion of the Quran, Allah says in the paradise, the angels will simply say, enter. Salam. They won't even say alaikum because there's no obligation in the paradise for any of us to maintain the peace. The peace is already there. Hence, Jannah, paradise, heaven. Okay. So we greet you all with the best greeting. Assalamu alaikum. May the peace that only Allah can give, the peacemaker, the peace giver, be upon you. And in the scripture, the Bible, the scriptures that come before or that came before the Quran. In the New Testament, Christ Jesus, when he entered among his disciples, so I'm, I'm sharing with you, this actually comes in the Bible before the Quran because the Bible is before the Quran. So we are speaking now to our Christian viewers and listeners and welcoming you to our Ramadan session here at Masjid Muhammad in Jacksonville, Florida. So when Christ Jesus peace be upon him, would come among his disciples before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon the Prophet. The Bible has uh, the saying in the New Testament, Christ would say, peace be upon you. Salamu alaykum. See, and he spoke Hebrew, Aramaic. So we imagine him saying, because Hebrew and, and Arabic, because sister language, cousin language, they're related. So I can imagine him saying, salamu alaykum. Yes. Okay. So when Allah revealed to Muhammad the prophet in Medina later that one of Allah's names is Assalam, the prophet taught the followers to say Assalamu Alaikum. All right. So, you know, I share this with you all all the time because Imam Muhammad shared it with us. There's no way for us to really have a broad understanding of our religion. We can read the Quran, yes, but to really have the full picture, we must also know the life and the traditions of Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. There's no way around it. You have to. Okay, here we are in Ramadan, all right? And as I said yesterday in the in the Juma, I was reading chapter 2, verse 185 of the Ramadan, the month of the Quran, and fasting, okay? Well, there's nothing in the Quran that I have seen that tells us the steps of fasting. How many days, what to do, how to have our breakfast in the morning, the suhoor, it's not there. Uh, what we say, not there. How, how to break our fast called the iftar, how to break it and break it with what, not there. So where are we, where are we getting that instruction from? those instructions because we do it those of us who've been muslims for many years and even the new muslims uh the instructions come from who muhammad the prophet prayers and peace be upon him so you have to study the sirah the history life of the prophet the sunnah the traditions the hadith that i brought this book on fasting uh sahih al-bukhari uh volumes there's nine of them and four of sahih al-muslim sahih means authentic as best they could make it authentic these hadiths and sayings of the prophet and practices of the prophet 
that coincide with the Quran or can be supported by the Quran. No way around it. And I was um, speaking with a friend of mine. Oh, he called me. He asked me a question. This is a good question. Very observant. And he said, uh, we're speaking of the greetings now. I'm, I'm welcoming you all to the session. So we start. But we don't want to just ritualistic say things out of ritual and not understand what we're talking about. So he said, Imam Yahya, I read the chapter on Juma, chapter 62. Now think about this. And he was asking me, he said, but the word for call to prayer is not a then. I said, well, yeah, that's true. So I'm, I'm going to read this to you now and explain Again, why we need Muhammad the prophet. We have him whether we want it or not. So ain't no, you know, I'm just I'm saying that we do have him. Thank Allah we had him. He received the Quran. All right. So we and Allah says in the Quran, many places, Wa'ati Allah, Wa'ati Rasul. And obey Allah. Yes. And obey the Prophet. Okay? Both. So we have to have both. All right. So the, the person asked me the question, any man Muhammad has shared it with us before, and uh, but I was sharing this with him. I said, now that's why you need Muhammad the prophet, because he's correct. The brother asked this question. So in chapter 62, Al-Juma'ah, the chapter on Juma, verse 9. Now listen to this. In Arabic, now in English, if you if you don't know Arabic, well, you're not gonna have an issue. But look, the person called me; he know knew Arabic from Tennessee. Yeah, you halladina aminu ida nudiya li salati min yom al Jumaati. Fas aw ila dikr Allahi. God the mighty spoke the truth. All you who believe, now if you're reading this, this is what you hear. And this is what you read. All you who believe, when the call is proclaimed to Salat prayer on Friday, the day of assembly, Hasten, or hasten, pardon me, hasten, come quickly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off business and trafficking. That is commerce, uh, al -bayya, business and commerce, trade. That is best for you if you but knew. Now look what verse 10 says, though. فَإِذَا كُدِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ and when the prayer is over, finish, then may you disperse, go into your very, Imam Muhammad explained this verse like this. He said, go into your diverse areas of interest in business. Then may you go into, back into your various business interests throughout the land and seek of the bounties of Allah and celebrate the praises of Allah, of Allah often in order that you may be successful. Falahad, be successful, right? Okay, so we're told, leave the business, come to prayer, and then when the prayer is over, go back to business, right? But the call, this is what the brother wanted to know because he knew Arabic. He said, Imam Yahya, I'm reading the Quran. He said, but the word is not a then. I said, I know. It's nudia. He said, yeah, so, so what is that? That's not saying the then call. I said, my brother, that's why you need Muhammad the prophet. Because <laughs> it's not a then. So the verse is not saying when you hear the then come to prayer. It says when you hear nudia. All right. Now to understand that, and this is what I share with him. You go to chapter three. This is the way Imam Muhammad instructed us now. Go to chapter three, verse. And always keep in mind as much as possible 
the Quran, as Imam Muhammad shared with us, was revealed in a context, a social context and a time context. So if you read one verse and pull it out of context, you could be off, you could be missing it. So you have to read these ayahs in the context. And also keep in mind, what? The Quran was not revealed to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all at one time. Came over a period of 23 years. So for circumstances, situation, time, context, we have to keep these things in mind. All right. So when you go to chapter 3, uh, where's the verse I'm looking for? Uh, I gave it to him. Let me turn here. And this just came back uh, to my mind. Okay. Hold on. Let's see here. So I didn't have it marked now. It just came back to my mind because I was telling him the verse that says, We have heard the call of one calling us to prayer. Say, We have believed. Ah, ah, I know where it's at. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. And it doesn't say a than either. So you say, well, where we get this a than? Okay, here we go. So chapter 3, verse 193. Now remember, I still have my hand on the call. Well, all you who believe when the call is proclaimed the prayer on Friday, the day of assembly, haste and earnest to the remembrance of Allah, leave off business and traffic, that is best for you. But no. Now, if you don't know Arabic, you think the call is the Adan. Nope, it's not here. Rabbina in inna sami'na. Verse 193. Munadiyan yunadi lil imani. An aminu bi rabbikum fa'amina. Rabbina thaqfir lana dhunubana. وكثر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا ما الأبرع صدق الله العظيم God the mighty spoke the truth now translating this verse 3 and 193 the code connects with 62 and 9 our Lord now remember this chapter is here in this verse here before in the chronology we have heard the call but what's the word here Munadi same as the one in Juma. We have heard the call of one calling us to faith. Not the masjid. Mm. We have heard the call of one calling us to faith. Munadi and Unadi. Da'i. Da'wa. All associated with this word now to call, to invite someone to the religion. We have heard the call of one inviting us, calling us to faith. Believe you in the Lord, and we have believed. Our Lord, forgive us our sins, blot out from us our iniquities, corruption, and take to thyself our souls in the company of the righteous. Okay, so Munadi, Unadi, calling, the one calling is the Munadi, the Da'i, the caller. So when we hear Juma Friday, either Nudia Lissolat, same caller. That's not Bilal ibn Rabbah standing up making it then. So how do we get there then if this is not what the then is? The Mu'edhan, and I see my cousin, he's here, uh, Qasim. He calls their dan on Friday for us sometime. But we don't say, get up and make the, the unadi. Uh, no, we say, get up and make what? The adhan. And the person calling the adhan is called what? Mu'edhan. And mu'edhan is associated with, you see the body part, I'm hitting my ear in a pair. This is udhan. You want to say ear in Arabic? You say udhan. Hand, you say yed. Eyes, you say Ainun. So here for the ear is Udhan. Pay attention. Give your ear 
to the call to prayer and listen. And Uthen is also associated with be ithni, ithni, permission. So when we stand to pray, we don't just stand up to pray. We have to request God's permission to enter his presence. All of this associated with that. So the call for the prayer is mu'edhan. So what is this saying to us then? So I share with my friend, this is telling us that we should be inviting people to Friday prayer. We should be inviting people to Al-Islam. And in the time of Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man passed by on one occasion when the Prophet was teaching Juma. And he stood and listened. Just listen. He wasn't a Muslim. So he wasn't obligated to be there to pray. He was there though. And the Prophet Sallallahu told his followers, he said, that man that's listening received the same blessings as though he was sitting here with us today. Yes. Okay, so how do we get there then? Because it's not mentioned here in the Quran. And the word where a then is mentioned, ah, let me give it to you. Got to keep it in a context. Chapter 20. This is Ramadan session, so it's not Juma. Uh, chapter 20 verse and see again this is not this is not on my uh, note 21 is it 20 or 21 let me see I think it's 21 let's go to 21 21. Yes, 21. The verse that says, Adentakum ala siwa. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Okay, so in chapter 21, Al Anbiya, the prophets, verse 109. Now here's the word of then. Fa into wallo fa kul adhan to kum adhan. You hear then? Adhan to kum ala sawa in. Wa adriya akair akaribun akaribun am baidum ma tu adun. But if they turn back, this is. Allah revealing to Muhammad the prophet when you're inviting the people, tell him to come to one God, the verse before that. قُلْ إِنَّمَا يُحَا إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Say, O Muhammad, the God telling him through revelation, what has come to me by inspiration is that your God is one God. Will you therefore bow to his will in al-Islam or bow as Muslim? Let's say al-Islam. Say Muslim. But if they turn their backs, don't listen, don't want to accept it, say, I have called or proclaimed the message. Adhan tukum. The message to you all alike and in truth, but I know not whether that which you are promised is near or far. Okay, so now let me get through that right quick. So the Adhan, how do we get the Adhan for the Friday prayers? And the five times prayers too, the five daily prayers. How do we get the Adhan? And in the call to prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we say four times. Ashadun la ilaha illallah. Uh, Allahu Akbar means God is greater. For our Christian audience, non-Muslims, and our Jewish friends on today, shalom, uh, greetings and peace to you and uh, to all of our listeners and viewers around the country, the United States of America, and in the international community, and to our dear sister Junaina in Malaysia, salamu alaikum, my friends and family in Bermuda. Uh, assalamu alaikum to all of you, all right? 
So I'm, I'm, I'm opening up, giving the greetings, what we're, what we're saying with this language in the Quran. And I was explaining the difference between salamu alaykum and assalamu alaykum. And the prophet teaching his followers to say assalamu alaykum because it means may the peace that only Allah can give you. Not just a general greeting, okay, specific. And uh, more, uh, a higher value and more valuable if you're asking God to give us the peace. Yes. So now we're on the then. Muhammad the prophet was looking, searching for a way, but this is in the Sirah history and also in the Hadith, the Sunnah tradition of the prophet, of how to gather the people together for the Friday prayer. Okay? And he said, I don't want to imitate, I'm paraphrasing, the Jews, they have the shofar, the horn. They blow the horn, whoop, to crawl, like the ram's horn. They blow through it. And the Christians had the bell, the bell, bim, hit on the church bell, bim, ringing the bell. And he didn't want to imitate, the prophet didn't, what the Christians were already doing and the Jews were already doing. A couple of brothers came to the prophet, and the prophet had this vision too, but a couple of brothers came to him, and they shared with him they had a vision of a person utilizing the human voice to call the people to for prayer, to line up for the prayer, let them know when it's prayer time. And the prophet, he told them, he said, I had similar vision, a vision now. Uh, he was the prophet of God. Let me just say it like that. He was the prophet of God. So Allah could tell him anything, and he did. He gave him the whole Quran. So he could reveal to the prophet, the prophet Muhammad, what it was on the minds of anyone, all right, as were his wives at one time. So don't think that God can't tell the prophet what other people thought of and what they dreamt of and had in their mind as a vision. Yes, he did it many times. <laughs> because on one occasion, more than one occasion, but I, I was reading uh, where Allah revealed to the prophet what his wives had been discussing. He wasn't present. And when he told them what they had been saying, what was on their mind, they asked them, they said, well, how could you know that? He said, what, what kind of question is that? First of all, I'm, I'm saying that now. He, he said, from the same one who gave me the Quran, he gave me what you all were saying. All right? So if we know our prophet, and we know God can tell him what he wanted to tell him. He gave him the Quran, so he told his wives. He said, God told me what you all were saying and what was on your mind and what you were talking about, even though I wasn't present. Yes. So the prophet told him, he said, get Bilal, Ibn Rabah. This is how Bilal becomes the first Mu'edhan, the caller to prayer, for the prayer itself now, not the new diet in the Juma. He said, Bilal has the most harmonious voice. This was the African. Bilal parents born in Africa, Abyssinia, now known as uh, Ethiopia. And they call him Bilal Habashi. Bilal the Habashi African. Bilal was born in Mecca. May Allah be pleased with him. He wasn't born in Africa. I don't think he ever went to Africa. And when he left to be, uh, left uh, Arabia to go to be buried where he went to live. He was felt unsettled after the prophet passed and he went to Damascus, Syria. That's where Bilal is buried, in Syria, not Africa. He's buried in Syria. His parents, mother and father were from Africa, but he was born in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, spoke Arabic. This is Bilal ibn Rabah, the African who was a slave that was liberated by the teachings of Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, and that Abu Bekr, who was the rich man, companion of the prophet, purchased Bilal's freedom from Bilal's slave master, okay? In the famous words from Bilal ibn Rabah, he said, Abu Bekr, are you freeing me to make me your slave? Because if you are, I'm not interested in that. And Abu Bekr said, no, 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 I'm not freeing you for that. Uh, the prophet sent me to pay the cost of your liberation, freedom. And, and Bilal's 
digress here a minute from the that. Bilal's uh, rude and crude slave master thought he had got the upper hand on Abu Bakr. He said, eh, I'm imagining he talked like this. Eh, eh, eh. You know, I would have paid, I would have took less money for that black slave if you had offered it. And Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, and I would have paid more money for him if you had offered it, if you'd asked. So you the one got the short end as a stick, buddy, because you could have got more money. This man is valuable. And the prophet taught him, taught Bilal, the words of the Adhan that we have all over the world today. Isn't that wonderful? So how are you going to dismiss Prophet Muhammad and don't accept the prophet when we wouldn't even have the Adhan if the prophet hadn't taught it to Bilal? And for the Fajr prayer, which the prophet approved, Bilal added, As-salatu khayron min al-nom, as-salatu khayron min al-nom, pardon me, as-salatu khayron min al-nom, and prayer is better than sleep. The salat is better than sleep. He added that. And the prophet said, oh, Mumtaz, excellent. Yes. So that's how we get the adhan. Now, show me the adhan in the Quran. You can't. So I just told you how we got it. So you can't just, just read just the Quran and think you have the whole picture. No. We must know and study the life of Muhammad the prophet because God gave him the Quran and then he shows us. He's called what? Uswatun Hasana, the most excellent model, the most excellent example. So he had to teach his followers and hence teach us how to apply the Quran how to fast Ramadan, how to make the five daily salats, how to pray during Tarawih, what to say in the event, what to say in the uh, Ikama, what to say, the, the, the tell the people the prayers ready, what to say when we break our fast for Ramadan, what to say. All of these things we learn from the traditions, the Sunnah they call it, the traditions of Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace be upon our Prophet. So I hope I have uh, made that clear for you on the greeting, assalamu alaikum, and also on the adhan and the need to know and, and study the life of Muhammad the prophet. <clears throat> now I'm going to read here some hadith to start us on fasting. This is Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you all out there. Blessed Ramadan. But we have a guest with us, our uh, sister visiting with us from New York, uh, Sister Shishat uh, from Masjid Muhammad, um, uh, Masjid Malcolm Shabazz. So she brings us greetings from Masjid Malcolm Shabazz, my dear friend and uh, associate, Imam Ezekiel Pacha. Uh, and he sends us greetings and she brings us the greetings of assalamu alaikum we return it and i've already shared with her to uh return the greetings to our friends there in uh, masjid malcolm shabazz and ramadan mubarak so we're happy to have you with us here today sister shisha so she gave me this and uh she's a visitor with us she has some work she's doing in jacksonville uh and she says she watches on the juma prayer uh, Facebook and YouTube when she was here and now she's here for the Ramadan session so we happy to have you with us <clears throat> Ahlan wa sahlan as they say welcome and be at ease you're among your brothers and we'll have some sisters join us a little later today they told me to be coming for the session inshallah okay so Muhammad the prophet now on Ramadan before I get to our theme uh, for this weekend the meaning and the role of Khalifa. And I wrote it on the board for you, Khalifa 10. So we'll, when we get to it, I'll explain what I put there. And uh, so you know what the schedule is. So we started at 12. We have, uh, we're recording this, not just on Facebook and on YouTube, but we're recording it on our CD disc for some of you. And so the CD, we'll we, uh, do it in phases because 
they, they don't have as much time space on it. So for every 45 minutes, we'll take a break by our technicians to finalize that CD for the first 45 minutes and then put another CD in. So just be a little short pause for that. So at 12.45, we'll take a pause so he can exchange the CD disc, and then we'll go to 1.30. So from 12 to 1.30, and we make our salat. We break our prayer. We come back at 2. So we have a break in between from 2 to 3.30. And after the, we conclude at 3.30, I just said our sister be here and she walks in the door. <laughs> I just said it, Lizette. Our sister, she shat is here from Harlem, Mr. Malcolm Shabazz. And I was telling her just before you open that door, I said, we'll have our sister join us in shortly. And you walk right in like the angel sent you right in in time. So at 3.30, we conclude for today at 3.30. We will be back tonight at 9 o'clock. Salat al Isha prayer, uh, the last prayer tonight, and then after Isha, it'll be live for you all out there and who want to join us uh, for the prayer. Uh, we will be at nine o'clock for the Isha prayer and then Tadawi Salat. And we will record the prayer like I did last year, short chapters so you can learn it. Uh, you can memorize these on your own time. We'll, it'll be posted up on StreamYard, Facebook, and YouTube. So during the weekday or what have you, we can go on and learn the prayer. Okay, the Tarawi uh, Salat as Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace be upon the Prophet, he taught us in the Hadith. So I have the book right here, Sahih Al-Bukhari. I'll hold it up to you for you. You see that? That's the Hadith book, uh, the third volume out of the nine volume set that covers pretty much what we need to know of the fast, Ramadan, fasting, how to fast, what to say, the Tarawi Salat, how many rakahs the Prophet made, Prasby, all of that is in volume three of the nine volume set, okay? So we'll make the Salat to Tarawi prayer, the, night, the last prayer of the night, and we'll record it. Tomorrow, inshallah, because we do it two days on the weekend. Tomorrow, same schedule, but no tarawi, because I would have already done it tonight. You have it recorded. So tomorrow, Sunday, inshallah, God willing, 12 o'clock, same time, 1.30, make salat, and then it start again at 2, 3.30. Now, this is East Coast time, so those of you all on the East Coast, your time will be with us. Uh, coincide with our time. Those of you all uh, in the central time zone, you of course are an hour behind us. And then you all on the west coast, you three hours behind us. So your prayers will, some of your prayers might even come in while we're talking. So it'll, it'll be recorded. So you, you can always come back later and watch it. So at 3.30 tomorrow, we will conclude the session for the weekend. And I'm going to do it every weekend. Allah bless me with good health. And, the, and, the, and I can handle the fast because I'm pretty good with it. Been doing it for such a long time. But those last 10 days usually get to me. <laughs> so I'm pretty good for the first few days because your body is adjusting to this. And, and then after you get near 20, 25 days, the body is all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what I made it through last year, alhamdulillah, and uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll be fine uh, this year. I think I, I, I found me a, a, a remedy, of, a, a, a regimen that, that helps me uh, to keep my energy when I'm doing this. So inshallah, we'll, we'll do the whole uh, month, every weekend for the Ramadan session. Now, let me say something on that because it's interesting. And Allah brought this to my mind. Because I have been at, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think I've missed any Ramadan sessions with Imam W.D. Muhammad, except the first one. Now, if I were to ask you all in the audience, now, now my friends in the Southwest, Louisiana, 
New Orleans, Baton Rouge, all that's in Louisiana, Shreveport, uh, Houston, uh, Imam Kassam, my dear friend, he's passed when he was in Dallas. He's no longer here with us. Allah grant him the high station in paradise with Imam Muhammad and others. But he was in the southwest section at the time, Oklahoma, Arkansas. For the first, I was in Jacksonville. This is in 1981. I was still in Jacksonville. I, I, I moved to Dallas in 82. The first Ramadan session that you met Muhammad did was not in Chicago. Somebody could tell me if you all out there, I have this is not Juma, so you can write on the screen. I have my technicians and they'll write. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions now, write it down and they'll write the questions on the pad and give them to me during a break so we can address your questions too. So even though I'm, I have a formal presentation for you, uh, you may have questions and things you want to add. So if you know that when the first Ramadan session was, anybody listening and viewing right now, type it in the comment section and, and, and my uh, assistants, they will let me know. So I'll give you five, five seconds. Now the, the 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 brothers in the southwest section don't you all don't qualify because you all already know, <laughs> so that's a hint. I just gave you the hint. For the rest of you, the first one, and I wasn't at that one. I have it by uh, because of my dear friend Imam Qasim Ahmed uh, that I mentioned that had passed on Allah, granted him the high station in paradise because he was there. He was. The imam, the, the regional representative, the sectional representative for that area back in those days. We're talking a long time ago. What is that? 41 years. That was 41 years ago. The first Ramadan session conducted by Imam W. Dean Muhammad was in the southwest section of the United States of America with the imams in the southwest section. Few imams. And uh, Imam Qasim gave me the, the the presentation later. It was recorded. He gave it to me. I have it in my, my, my library, alhamdulillah. That was in 1981. And when the Imam gave the presentation to those Imams, he told them, he said, I'm starting a tradition for us in America that I hope one day, and it has. It is catching on. And I was mentioning to Sister Shishat earlier how happy I am to see so many of our learned brothers and sisters too conducting and teaching Ramadan sessions all over the uh, United States now, social media. Nope, somebody put Athens, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Nope, nope, nope. That was 1995. I was present at that one. That wasn't the first one. I was there. Uh, but I just gave you the date, 1981. I wasn't there because I didn't know that. I knew some of the imams at the time. I knew Imam Qasim, but I didn't leave Jacksonville to go because I didn't I didn't know what it was. He said, Imam Muhammad is going to be here and he's going to be teaching. I said, well, I can't make it. Please send me the information. He did. But here's what the imam said. He said, I hope one day that what I'm starting here, it was a camp. I think the camp was called Camp Lejeune. If I'm not mistaken, and my, my friends in the Southwest section, they will correct me. They didn't fact check it and correct me because it's like I said, it's been a long time. This is 40 something years ago. Uh, and uh, but I remember what he said is in, in this context. He said, I hope one day that what I'm starting here with you imams, small group of imams out in, in the Southwest section at that camp will spread across the United States of America one day. And we will have our learned leaders, imams, uh, teaching, taking the time, doing Ramadan, like the scholars do. Like the scholars. Uh, I'm underlining this now from Imam Muhammad. Like the learned Muslims, the scholars. This is not for, just for anybody. Uh, New, what does that say? New Mexico? No, it wasn't in New Mexico. No, it wasn't in New Mexico. Uh, it was in the southwest section, and it wasn't Mex Mexico. It was at a camp uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, or Arkansas, somewhere. So, if one of the brothers from that area who knows can tell us, because this is uh, stupid in my mind, Alexandria, 
Alexandria, Louisiana. I think that's it. Okay. All right. So we can go. We can go right here. Maybe a couple of minutes. Let me let me get this out on the on the. Uh, he's giving me my time, uh, but we're not gonna overrun the CD disc. Yeah, we good. So anyway, the Imam said. He said, "I want this to spread like the learned Muslims all over the world." teach during Ramadan session, they educate, share things from the Quran, the life of Muhammad, the prophet, they take this time, the spiritual time of purification to learn and educate the members, the followers. He said, I hope this will spread across the United States of America. And today, 2021, I'm looking on Facebook because of social media. Now remember back in those days, there was no social media. There was no Facebook in 1981, any YouTube, no. Now I see so many of our learned brothers, and I know them, and some sisters who are on Facebook, YouTube, and they're having sessions. Some of them call them conferences, whatever, sessions. The, listen, the term Ramadan session is not trademark. It doesn't belong to anybody. You can't trademark Ramadan session because Ramadan is for all the Muslims. And we can come together and have sessions. So there's no trademark or copyright saying nobody have any right on that. It belongs to all the Muslims. Ramadan is the month of fasting for all Muslims, two billion Muslims all over the globe. Okay. And we can sit and have a session. We can have sessions. All right. And this is the wish of Imam Muhammad. It was his desire, and now his wish, his desire, his dream, his vision for us in America has come true now. Yes, yes, yes. And he would be so proud to see that so many of his students uh, who are learned, let, let me underline that, learned, <laughs> informed, this is not just for anybody to get on. I mean, this is free country. It's an open society now. So I'm, I'm saying that. But I'm telling us, we don't want the standard of education to drop just because anybody says, well, I could get on and get on. Of course you could. But you're not going to get a big audience if you're not saying anything from us. Because, uh, But we don't want you out there miseducating people either. Because Prophet Muhammad said, now listen carefully. He said one of the strongest punishments that God as for the people, followers, believers, is if you mislead and misdirect people in religion. So this is no game we playing here now. So you all out there just want to be seen and want some attention or something. And no, 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 be very careful. And you know who you are out there now. This is nothing to play with. So we don't, we're playing with people. We don't play with people's lives and misleading people. And yeah, we've been down that path. In the old nation of Islam. Yeah, and we lost a whole lot of folk. Uh, someone said Dallas 1981 was crazy. That was 1982. I was present. I, I've been there, done it. <laughs> In fact, that was my assignment. I was, I was assigned to Dallas. That was my assignment from Jacksonville, Florida, 1982. Now, I had gone in the latter part of 81, because I had just come back from Hajj in 1981, too. And uh, in 1981, October of 1981. And so 1982 is when I was transferred, made my trans, uh, my move from Jacksonville, Florida, as the imam in Jacksonville. I was the imam of the Jacksonville Masjid of Al-Islam from 1977 to 1982 for five years. And prior to that, I was the imam in Gainesville, Florida for a year. From 1976 to 77. Prior to that, I was the young minister imam, minister slash imam in Tallahassee, Florida in 1975. So I've been doing this work for a while. So Imam Muhammad transferred Qasim, Imam Qasim Ahmed, God grant him the high station in paradise, my, my partner, that was my partner, transferred him to Chicago. Imam Muhammad said, Qasim, I need somebody to take your place in Dallas. But it has to be somebody that you trust, you know, 
and can keep things going and build on what you have established in Dallas in three years. He was the man from 79, 1979 to 1982, Imam Casa. And he and I were very close. We, we talked together. He helped advance my knowledge of Arabic, understanding of the Arabic language, Imam Casa, and Dr. Nasser too, uh, especially Dr. Nasser in Miami, helped me understand in 1977 the language of Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad when Imam sent him from Chicago to Miami. So I'm, I'm giving you, a lot of y'all don't know, you don't know my background, you don't know my history. Uh, so I got a long history back there. And I met Imam Muhammad in 1979, personally, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh, side note, first masjid built from the ground up under Imam Muhammad's leadership. And my dear friend, he used to claim it all the time and I would correct him. God granted High Station Paradise to Imam Clyde Rahman out of Cleveland, Ohio, Masjid Bilal. I used to say, my friend, you have a beautiful masjid, but you're not number one. Because he wasn't aware. He didn't know. First masjid built was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. African-American Muslims built it. My friend Raymond Rashid was the imam down there. Imam W.D. Muhammad, the first time I met him personally, and he and I became friends from that moment on was in 1979, Imam Muhammad came down, and that's when I met Imam Qasim. He came with him, and Dr. Nas and all of us, we were together, ex Dr. Nas, so he'll tell you, he was there. And I went from Jacksonville, Florida, I was the Imam in Jacksonville, uh, Muhammad Abdullah in Birmingham now, he was the Imam in Tampa. We all drove to Fort Lauderdale, Florida for the dedication Beautiful masjid, it's still down there now. Built under Imam Raymond Rashid and Imam Muhammad came and dedicated the first masjid under his leadership built from the ground up. Now I know Washington DC, I know you all, y'all, you all the nation's mosque, meaning you all in the in the in the in the capital of the nation. We we get that. And that was the first masjid built under Honor Elijah Muhammad. Yeah, in Washington, DC, built now from the ground. So they have that distinction, and Fort Lauderdale has the distinction of being the first in 1979. That's when I met Imam W.D. Muhammad. And as they say, the rest is history. And, and uh, when Qasim told Imam, he said, yes, I have Imam Yahya Abdullah. You met him, you know him. I recommend that he become the Imam in Dallas, Texas. Imam said, all right. And then I was out there for the creed convention we had in Dallas, Texas in 1982. Okay. All right. So now we're going to pause right here and then we'll come back. Let the, uh, our technician change out the CD. So give them about five minutes to do that. Don't you all go anywhere. Uh, we, I'm not going to move. I'm going to be sitting right here. So we're on camera and, uh, Uthman, you can in that finalize it and then CD this number two. Assalamu alaikum. They put, don't go anywhere. What did he say? It could have been. Yeah, it's been a long time. I don't understand that question. Oh, okay, okay. I see what the question is. Okay. Okay, somebody said, okay, so they may be correct, so I'll correct it. Okay. It must have been late. No, it was in the summertime, too. And that could be true, because I think I might have gone out there for the visit. And then I moved in 82, so she may be correct. 
She got married in Dallas. You have us on pause, Raheem? Okay, no problem. So you all still listening to me then. If... <laughs> yeah, can you mute us? Okay, assalamu alaikum. We back. We uh, switched the uh, CD for the second phase of this. Uh, now, while I was away, well, some of y'all heard my last comment because it wasn't muted. But while I was away, uh, there's a sister who's watching us, and she knows the date correctly better than I do for the craid. And she said it was in June of 1981. So I'm gonna ex accept what she said because I don't recall particularly. Like I said, it's 41 years ago. So she said she remember it because she got married. She will, rem she would remember that, <laughs> her wedding date. And she said, Imam Qasim officiated it June of 1981. What I recall is this. It was extremely hot. So I know it was in the summertime. And uh, later on, Imam Muhammad, he had a joke. I was just about to tell this before uh, my friend put the CD in. He said... He said, yeah, I remember the Craig uh, convention and walk we had in Dallas, Texas. He said, because that heat not only had all of us about to pass out, he said it killed the Craig movement. <laughs> Everybody was like, we done with this, all this marching. And I never experienced heat like that. It gets hot in Jacksonville, but it's humid. But that heat that year was torturous. And I remember we all walking down the street uh, carrying the signs. Craid, for, for you all who don't know what that is, I, I, I should explain that. C-R-A-I-D, Craid. Committee to remove, Imam Muhammad gave us this, all images that attempt to portray the divine. So it was a movement to do away with idols. Yeah, pictures and images of the European image of Jesus and God. And Imam Muhammad started that back in the mid to late 70s. And then we had the convention where all of the creed organizers from all over the country, all over the United States of America, uh, met in Dallas, Texas. And I was present for that because I, I recall now, it was in the summertime, but it was in 82 that I moved from Jacksonville. So I was doing some visiting back and forth, becoming acquainted with the community in 1981 out in Dallas. And uh, in the summertime uh, there. So I was there for the Craig convention and I thought it was 82, but the sister, she knows better. So we uh, accept what she says as a correction that it was in June of 1981. So thank you very much, uh, dear sister, for giving us that information. That's important for our history. Now, a question came through <clears throat> from another sister that uh, it's medically necessary for her that she eat. She can't fast. Now, sister, in Juma yesterday, I addressed this. Chapter 2, verse 185 of the Quran, where Allah says fasting is prescribed except for those who are maridan, sick or ill. You can make the days up later if you can fast at all. And if not, you can feed someone poor in your family, give a meal or something reasonable, uh, poor people to compensate. You can do that, charity or what have you. So you can compensate 
for not being able to fast. All right? Don't hurt yourself. None of you all should do that because that's not required by Allah. In fact, you have you have an exemption. If you're fat, if you're sick, medication you have to take during the day you're ill, or you take medication because you're ill. Or if you're traveling on a journey, the exemption is given by God. Yes, Allah said, no, don't fast. Chapter 2, verse 185, okay? So you have the medical exemption uh, from Allah in the Quran. You have it in the Quran. I gave you the reference. And all of you out there, uh, make a note of that. Chapter 2, verse 185, that Allah gives the directions, uh, general directions on who should fast, uh, specific directions, general, specific, on who should fast and who should not fast. Take it, okay? Allah knows, take it. And remember, as I said in Jummah yesterday, uh, in the sayings of the prophet, now let's go there. In the sayings of the prophet, what did he say about the fast? He said, Allah says, Asiyamu li. Fasting is for me, it's for God. But Anna, Ajze, 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 and I will reward the fasting person. So we're fasting for Allah. We're not doing this for any other reason than for God, to be obedient to God, because God requires it of us. <clears throat> God uh, asks us to do it. And uh, in another one of these sayings, a hadith that I have from the prophet, he said, and I quoted this one in Jumai yesterday too, uh, he said, all of the deeds of the children of Adam are for them, all of our religious rituals for us, except fasting, Ramadan. Fasting is for me. So this one we're doing solely for God. So God says, don't fast if you're sick. Don't fast if you're traveling. So the one who asked us to fast, who commanded us to fast, say don't fast during these times, okay? Traveling and sick, all right? So I hope I answered that for you. And if you'd like to get the Jummah from yesterday, if you're on Masjid Muhammad's page or even on YouTube, scroll down, and the topic for Jummah yesterday was Ramadan, the month, of the Quran and fasting. So it's on this page, Mr. Muhammad's page, and it's on our YouTube page, Al Islam Worldwide Ministry. Also, Yahya Abdul Imam Yahya. They have their algorithms on YouTube, how they set it up. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now let's begin. We have 30 minutes for this session before we break this, uh, this session part for the uh, today. And then we will have the uh, go to address the topic the Khalifa, meaning and role of Khalifa. Muhammad the prophet says of the Ramadan, and let me, I have it. I have pages and I have the book. So I'm going to go to the book. The reason I have the pages, because the pages, some of these hadiths, the Arabic is not the print is not uh, as clear. So I, I have some pages where the Arabic is clear. So let me see here. The Arabic should be pretty clear here. Yeah. On the authority of Abu Huraira, and this is page 68, volume 3, Sahih al-Bukhari. So I'm showing you my reference, okay? The authentic Sayings of Sahih means authentic sayings of the Prophet. And this is on Ramadan. Abu Huraira, on his authority, this was the companion of the Prophet. Abu Huraira, he was also a companion of the Prophet. Many of the Hadiths collected sayings of the Prophet are for, for him. Now, what is Abu? Abu means father. Huraira means kit, kittens, cats, C A T S, or kittens, K I T T E N S, cats. He liked cats. And he used to take care of the kittens and the cats. But he'd be around the masjid and he'd be around the prophet all the time. So many of the sayings that we have in these hadith that are authentic comes through him. Abu Huraira, the father of cats and kittens. And Aisha, 
the young wife of Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. They are the two top. There are many others, companion, but they are the two top. Abu Huraira and Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. Because she was with the prophet all the time. Uh, obviously, she was his wife. <clears throat> so here on Ramadan, on his authority, he heard that the prophet said, Anna Rasulullah, he said, I heard the prophet say, Anna Rasulullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon the prophet Muhammad. Qala, he said this, he's quoting the prophet. Ida ja'a Ramadan, Ida ja'a Ramadanu futihat, abwalbu jannah. When the, when Ramadan begins, the gates, the doors, the, the gates of paradise of Jannah are open. Paradise, the doors are open. So I had a friend pass last week. I didn't even know he passed it today. He passed, uh, actually this week, it was Wednesday. The Imam from uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I knew him, Imam Kaba Rahim. May Allah forgive him and grant him paradise. But he passed during Ramadan. So the prophet has said, the gates of the Jannah, paradise, are open. Whoever passed during Ramadan, paradise. Paradise. So may Allah forgive him, Imam Kaaba and Rahim, Chattanooga, Tennessee, forgive him and grant him paradise. Passed during the month of Ramadan, the prophet said, the gates of the paradise are open. Again on Abu Huraira, page 69. That was Hadith 122. This one is 123. Same, but just a little couple of things more the Prophet added here. shahru Ramadana, the month of Ramadan. shahru Ramadana futihat Abwabu Samai Gulikat Abwabu Jen Jahannam Jahannam Wasusilati Shia Tain. The Prophet Muhammad said, Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace be upon the Prophet. When the month of Ramadan starts, and we're in the First 10 days, the days of mercy. The gates of the skies of the paradise are open. The gates of hell are closed. And Satan is chained up. He's in chains. Now, of course, you know this is, has to be in the proper. Explain it. What, is, what does it mean Satan is in chains? He doesn't have any influence over us during this month. As a matter of fact, Allah says in the Quran, Satan has no influence over you except what you allow him to have. He has no power over us. He just can't take over our life unless we give it to him. Yeah. And I've used the example before, you know, sometimes when they, God forbid, they have the criminal in court and the judge says, what, what motivated you to do this? And sometimes they'll say, the devil made me do it. Now, they, that's true. But he allows Satan to get the better of him or her. So Satan is chained up, though, in this month of Ramadan. Those influences of corruption on it. We're fasting during the day. We're not exposing ourselves to his negative culture and all these bad things during the time of fasting. So he doesn't have any influence over us to direct our life. We're fasting for God. We're making our prayers. We're adding the extra title we the night prayer, reading the Quran, one thirtieth, one just section of the Quran daily, or listening to it. Okay, we're listening to it, uh, one one thirty of the Quran a, a day. All right. So uh, we have this blessing of Ramadan from these sayings of Muhammad the Prophet. Now let me see. I'll get you to see one or two more.
Ah. Narrated Ibn Abbas. He said that Prophet Muhammad was the most generous among the people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدَ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ هِنَا يَلْقَاهُ جَبْرِيلٌ He said the Prophet was the most generous among the people and he increased or used to be more generous during the month of Ramadan. And when Jibreel, the angel, I wanted to read this one here, and Jibreel, when Jibreel visited him, and Jibreel, the angel of revelation, Wakana Jibreel alayhi assalam, alayhi assalam. Here's assalam again. Jibreel alayhi assalam, yalqahu kulla laylatan fi Ramadan, hatta yansali kha ya'rid. Alihi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Qur'an. And Jibreel used to meet him on every night of Ramadan. Now this is important. Till the end of the month. The Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to recite the Holy Quran to Jibreel. And when Jibreel met him, he used to be more generous than a fast wind. Okay? So two things you want to get from that hadith is I conclude the reading of those. One, the prophet increased his generosity during the month of Ramadan, charitable, more charitable during Ramadan. And Jibril, the angel who brought the revelation to the prophet, and this is the same Christians, our Christian brothers and sisters, Jews there, our Jewish friends too, Gabriel in the Bible. So this is the same. Jibril is Arabic, Gabriel in the Bible. So this is the angel of revelation. Uh, he would go over the Quran with the prophet Every Ramadan, every night of Ramadan, he would go over it with him and to make sure, not the prophet would forget it, but to review, rehearse the Quran with the prophet throughout the 23 years of revelation. Muhammad the prophet is the only one that received the entire, we have it in book form, and it was being written in his lifetime. He is the only one who received the entire Quran. No one else received the Quran but Prophet Muhammad. And it was written down in his lifetime. Let me, let me find the uh, chapter and verse for you to support what I just said to you. This is important for us as Muslims now that all of it was compiled in the life of Muhammad the prophet, the Quran, prayers and peace be upon it, every chapter, every word of it, from Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, and arranged. Jibril taught the prophet how to arrange the Quran. Because the way it's arranged in the Quran, Al-Fatiha wasn't the first revelation, and Nas wasn't the last revelation. So the angel Jibril uh, showed the prophet how to arrange the Quran in chronology that we have today, okay? And it was written down in his lifetime. So here in chapter 80, Abasa, he frowned and turned away. Verses 13 to 16. I'm going to give you these three. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Speaking of the Quran now. Fi suhufim mukarrama. Verse 13. It is in books. Held greatly in honor, scripture. I Meaning you can find teachings of the Quran and other scriptures. Verse 14. Marfu aten mutahara, exalted in dignity, kept pure. 
mutahara, important. Not corrupted. Not misinterpreted. Not written by people who were corrupt. Let me finish reading. Exalted in dignity, preserved, kept pure and holy. And God says he would hafid, he would preserve the Quran in another part of the Quran. He has done it. Verse 15. The ID suffering, suffering, the ID suffering, written. Quran was written by the scribes, Zayd ibn Thabit and others. Written by the hands of scribes as it was being revealed. Kiramim barara, barara, honorable, righteous, and noble and just. Companions of Muhammad the Prophet wrote it all. And when it was finally completed, all of it, the last verse, five and three, chapter five, verse three, the Prophet he kept the, the manuscript in his home, his personal home. He kept the manuscript himself, all of it written, revealed. But the angel Jibril used to go over the Quran with the prophet every night during the month of Ramadan. So, we have the word of God exactly yes, as it was revealed 1,443 years ago. In Arabic now, I'm not talking about translations, in Arabic, Arabia, I have mushafs. Uh, uh, Brandon, if you don't mind, can you give me one of those Arabic Qurans out of the office, please? Thank you. I want to show it to our order. This is a translation because most of you are English speakers in America, in the Western world, and other places. Arabic is English translated. Quran has been translated in many languages. So in America, we speak English. We speak English is our language. No, the small one. It's the small ones. He had a very large one. I don't feel like holding that big. It's a big one. It's okay, but I won't want this one of the small ones in all Arabic. Uh, so you can see. So this is Arabic and English, but the Arabic is uh, the entire Quran revealed in Arabic. Uh, let's see that one. I think that's it. Let me see. But there's some smaller ones in there. Ah, this is good. Thank you. This is good right here. Thanks, Brendan. And this one is excellent. I'm glad you brought this one. This says the Holy Quran with Tajweed rules. Yeah. Color coded, rainbow. Now I'm sure it's up. It's all Arabic. You see that? No translation. These colors. Uh, these are codes for how, and they explain it in the front. Yeah, I, I knew it was here because I have this. They explain it in English so you know what the colors mean for Tajweed. Now, what is Tajweed? T-A-J-W-E-E-D. Tajweed is the science of reciting, Reading the Quran correctly. Reciting it the way the prophet recited, the way Jibril taught it to him. It's a science. Hence the saying in the Quran, the challenge by God says, if you don't believe it's from God, produce a chapter like it. Call all your experts together to help you out and produce a chapter or verse like it. You will not be able to do it. You know why you won't be able to do it? Well, first of all, you can't replicate the revelation. You don't know the rules of Tejweed. <laughs> and we have so many people. I listen to them. They're wonderful, too. They're good. I'm not talking about the scholars now. I'm talking about in America. I listen to them recite the Quran prayer. And they have beautiful voices, especially among us now. You know, our people, oh, wonderful voices. And back in the earlier history behind us, when we were just learning the, how to re lead prayers and recite, we'd have all our skilled musical brothers 
they get up, they start singing the, the prayer, singing it like they were the temptations of Marvin Gaye. And I'd have to tell them later, brother, this is not a song. This is the word of God. And you need to learn Tajweed. So I started teaching Tajweed. I know it. Alhamdulillah. I learned it. I know it. So I started teaching it. Tajweed. The correct way. The rules. There are rules for recitation. See, Allah had you to get this one, Brendan. There are a lot of Arabic Qurans in there. He just went and got this. He didn't know this was the Tajweed rule. He put it there. So Allah wanted me to explain that. <laughs> to show it all Arabic, but color code it. And I think this, this one is manufactured in India, I believe. Color code it so you can learn the rules of Tajweed. Now, we have some of our learned uh, leaders and imams in our community, a few of them, that know Tajweed. Not all of them. The majority don't. The majority don't. Brother imams, you all please get with some of the learned imams and others who know the rules of Tajweed. And I'm going to recommend my dear friend, because he's teaching. He has a course online. And I know Sister uh, Imam Qasim's wife, uh, Nadia Ahmed, Islamic Learning Institute. They teach Tajweed. She has some of her uh, presenters in the training that train, and, and they know Tajweed. And one of them is a sister, Nisa Dewan. Out of Little Rock, Arkansas. She knows Ted Weed, Imam Hatem, Imam Wazir, Imam uh, Daniel Kareem, the oldest of all of us, senior, uh, that I'm talking about, the ones who are teaching now that I'm aware of, Imam Salim Muhman, that has Mali, Muslim American Learning Institute. He knows the Ted Weed. He has a class that teaches it. And there are others now. So don't, if I overlooked any of you all out there, I'm not slighting you. These are just the names that come to my mind uh, right off the top of my head that I know that's doing it on a, on a regular basis. Uh, and I'm associated and affiliated with Mali and the Islamic Learning Institute That because uh, Imam Qasim, this was one of his specialties, teaching Tajweed. Imam Qasim was excellent at that. So I know Sister Nadia, she continued at work and she's doing it with the Islamic Learning Institute. So you all can register for those courses, register for those classes. Mali Muslim American Learning, uh, Muslim American Logic Institute that was started by my dear friend, Imam Salim Mukhman. I'm a part of that. I've been a part of it since he started that out of Detroit, Michigan. So we have people in the United States of America, Muslims around the world. We have learned uh, scholars and imams in the United States of America that understand the rules of Tajweed, alhamdulillah. So we, we, we have the, the, the knowledge and the learning here and scholars uh, learning here in the United States also, okay? Thank you so much, Brandon, for that. All right, so now let me at least introduce this to you all before we break for prayer. And this is a session, so I hope you have if you're out there watching us, your pad, pens, brands, notepads, whatever, taking notes. And we're getting your questions. We have a few questions. So when I start at the Salat, I want you to engage with us. Please interact with us. This is not Jummah. You can't do that on Jummah. Please interact with us. This is your time now to ask questions. I have a presentation. I'm giving it to you. But I, I'm, I'm really here to help you as much as I can with Allah's help, understand better the religion and the insights of our leader, Imam Wadiduddin Muhammad, okay? So ask all the questions you want pertaining to religion. Now, don't, nothing foolishness and, and wasting time. We won't, even, we won't even entertain that, okay? This is Ramadan, so let's be serious. All right, chapter 2, verse 30 on the subject, the meaning and the role of Khalifa. And I'm going to read straight out of Imam Muhammad's book and explain all of this from his commentary. But I start with the Quran. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. And this is on beginning at verse 30. Al Baqarah, the cow or the heifer. Wa idh qala rabbuka 
للملائكتي إني جائلون في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها ما يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبه بهمدك ونكدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون God the mighty spoke the truth. This is man's creation in the beginning. Now the Bible has the beginning story, the Genesis story of man's creation also before the Quran now. Uh, but let me translate this in English. Behold, thy Lord said to the angels, God speaking to the angels, I will create in the Jailun. I am making or creating Jailun. I am making present tense, not past. Jail, I mean, he made it. This is he's creating and making, he's always doing it. I am creating a ruler on the earth, Khalifa. Ten. And I wrote the, board, the word on the board for you. I put one word up there, well, actually two words. I put it tr uh, transliteration. And then the, the common English term that we see, Khalif spelled C-A-L-I-P-H. And then in the red, A-T, Khalifate. That's how the Western people translate this, okay? And the last person that I'm aware of in modern history, he's no longer with us, Ali Baghdadi was claiming he was the caliphate. He, he was the caliphate. Well, they killed him. Like all of the caliphs, they call him Khalifa Rashid, uh, Khalifa Rashidun, or Khulafa Rashidun, the rightly guided caliphs. These were the four after Muhammad the prophet now. Here's what I want you to know right up front. Muhammad the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never appointed anyone to caliphate. Now he has the Quran revealed to him. I'm reading from the Quran. So if the prophet thought that was to be a title of a person, he received it. Chapter 2, verse 30. Why didn't he name Abu Bakr as the Khalifa? After him, he said, well, Abu Bakr is going to be the Khalifa. Omar will be the Khalifa. Uthman be the Khalifa. Ali is going to be the Khalifa. May Allah be pleased with them. The Sahaba, companion, Ashab, companions of Prophet Muhammad. He didn't name any of them. No one as his successor. The prophet didn't name anyone as his successor. Nobody. All right? And he gets it here now. Okay, so let's read. I am creating or will create a ruler on the earth. Khalifatan. The angels, they said. Will thou place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? Question. They're questioning God. While we do celebrate thy praises, and glorify thy name. Question. Allah said to the angels, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you know not. Wa allama al-adam al-asma'a kullaha thumma aradahum ala al-mala'ikati فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَاُولَاءِ All of this is rules of Tajweed. All these metas and extension sounds I'm making, they're in the Quran. See, because the rules of Tajweed say I have to stretch, I have to hold it this long, I have to do this. That's where you get that from out of that color-coded, the rules of Tajweed. إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And he taught Adam the names, the nature of everything. Then he placed them before the angels and said, now you all angels, tell me the names and the nature of these things in creation if you are truthful. Qalu subhanaka, verse 32. They, the angels said, glory to thee of knowledge لَا إِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّ مَا عَلَمْتَنَا 
We have no knowledge except what you taught us. In truth, it is thou who art perfect in knowledge and wisdom. God says, Ya Adam, him, ambiu him, be as him, Felemma amba amba ahum, be as him, Hola, Alem akulakum, in ye alemu, by the Samawati well ardi, where alemu ma took duna ma kuntum tectumu. He said, God, O oh Adam, tell them their natures, their names. When he had told them, Allah said to the angels, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the skies and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you are concealing? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَا فَسَجِدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ بَا They were concealing this one now. He was faking like he was an angel. وَاسْتَقْبَرَا وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And behold, we said to the angels, Bow down, make such sujus as you do. Look, God told the angels, Bow to Adam. And they submitted. Bow down. Except Illa Iblis Abba was Dagbara. Except Iblis. He was arrogant, haughty, proud. And he refused to bow. He was one of the rejectors of faith. Now I'm going to conclude it right there. And after we come back from prayer, uh, Salat al prayer, 2 o'clock, join us back at 2, and uh, we will, at 2 o'clock, after 2, so you join us at 2 o'clock, and we come back on, and then we will go back to the Khalifa. Don't go anywhere now, just make your prayers and and come back because we have the second session from 2 to 3.30 p.m. All right? Assalamu alaikum.